A big weather shift is set to sweep across the United States into next week. The front bringing the shift could also help in eliminating a tropical threat that may approach the USA coast. This video will provide the latest on the USA and developments in the tropics. Before I jump into anything else, I want to overview the weather pattern set up ahead, including the shift on the way. Let's do just that by taking a look at the mid-level atmospheric pattern forecast from this European ensemble of blended guidance. On this type of map, wherever you see yellow and orange shades indicates where there is a big ridge or anomalous push northbound in the jet stream that typically results in warmer than average temperatures. On the flip side, blues indicate where there is an anomalous trough or area of dipping in the jet stream that's often associated with some lower pressure systems and places where we get some cooler air to move in. As we go through the next couple of days, you can see where Hurricane Aaron is going to be tracking dangerously close to the east coast of the United States. As I've been discussing in the last several videos, though, direct Direct impacts are really only going to skirt through the outer banks and then offshore. We'll otherwise just see some gusty winds and surf conditions to deal with up and down the east coast. The main thing going on over a lot of the United States mainland in the next few days is going to be high pressure ridging, where the jet stream is being pushed northbound and we see temperatures well above average for this time of the year. As indicated on this guidance, that general trend is set to continue out of Thursday and Friday and into the beginning of the weekend for most, but then we're going to see a shift over a lot of the central and eastern U.S. by the time we get towards Saturday and Sunday. All of these blues diving down out of southern Canada and towards the Mississippi River Valley and from southeast Canada towards the east coast indicate a trough or a big dip in the mid and upper level jet stream coming down that is going to aid in fueling a surface front that will eventually move off the east coast. Behind that front is where those big changes will come in in the form of a cool down and some drier air. I'll talk more about the temperature changes a little bit later on, but you can see that that's going to really last around as we go through a good bit of next week. Back to the western U.S. though, things should remain warmer than average as ridging persists. Before I dive deeper and discuss the front in more detail, here's a quick reminder that many of the model maps I use are from Weatherbell. You can access their free trial link below in the description. With that being said, let's take a look at the GFS Ensemble Blended Guidance Future Radar for the coming days using the presentation displayed by the awesome Weatherbell model maps. As we go out of our Tuesday when I'm recording this video and into the Wednesday time frame, you can see that we're going to see some active weather ongoing for some parts of the country before we get sweeping changes to move in. There's actually a lingering frontal boundary that's starting to stall near parts of the southern and eastern United States. That boundary is actually going to be a factor that helps in keeping air and offshore, as I've noted in previous videos. It also means some storms, at least in spotty nature at times, from the Gulf Coast up the East Coast as we go through the next couple of days. Eventually, we're going to start to see that next front, the one that's going to bring changes, enter the picture as well. That's going to happen as we go out of our Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening, while zones from Texas and Louisiana over to Georgia and the Carolinas and points in between deal with the old frontal boundary and the scattered storms from it. We'll also be getting some scattered storms through Thursday afternoon and evening from the high plains up into parts of the north central plains as that new front begins to eject on in from the north. As the calendar shifts from Thursday, August 21st into Friday, August 22nd, the front moving in from the north will begin to get more expansive. As that occurs, that means zones from the upper Midwest and Great Lakes through the central plains all the way back to the high plains will have a chance of some scattered afternoon and evening storms. Some of those could even last into the overnight hours, Friday night into early Saturday, bringing the risk of some spotty severe weather as well as spotty flooding. One zone where I'm also concerned about flooding for the next few days is where that lingering front in the southeast U.S. will continue to pump out more storms. While many of these won't necessarily be severe, they could pump out heavy rain totals even into the night. That will impact places like Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas even into Saturday before the new front even arrives. Here we go. By the time we get out of Saturday and into the Sunday time frame, the front will still be draped back into some parts of the southern and south central U.S., but we'll especially see that front starting to encroach on the east coast in the Appalachian chain. From Georgia and the Carolinas up to New York, it will be a widespread storm coverage into Sunday afternoon and evening as the front pushes in and elevates the moisture content one last time. By the time we get into Monday, that's when changes will be more likely as most of the country will begin to dry out. This is that funnel of drier air showing up on the guidance right here. It will dive in from the north central U.S. through the mid and upper Mississippi Valley and then down towards at least the Appalachian chain as early as Monday. Out of Monday and into Tuesday, things will only get drier and cooler for even more folks. Let's track out how that front will bring in temperature changes over the coming days. First, let's take a look at where there will not be much in the way of change, and that's going to be as we go through the rest of the midweek and late week time frame, even as we go out of 
where the, what this graphic shows with Wednesday and Thursday and into Friday, many zones from the western to the central to the eastern U.S. will be around to warmer than average in terms of temperatures. We will get some rain-cooled air or just a little bit of a cool down behind that lingering boundary in the east to finish this week, but that will be nothing compared to the next cool down starting to come in by this weekend from the north especially in places like Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois. Temperatures are expected to be as much as 10 to 15 degrees below average at times for Saturday and Sunday. That's going to be on the east side of that ridge, though, where things will remain above average in the temperature department for places like Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, and Idaho especially. Those zones will remain warm, but even more of the east will cool down as we go into the early week time frame of next week. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday look to bring well below average temperatures to the Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley. And then even as you get towards the east coast, we will be at least a little bit below average in comparison to late August norms. Before I move on and discuss the risk of a tropical impact to the United States next week, or how this front could help in keeping that away, let's discuss what those anomalies I just talked about mean for actual temperature values. As we go through the near term, we're talking about warmth. Triple-digit heat building up through the valleys of California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. Triple-digit heat all the way in up to the Canadian border of Montana and the Dakotas. As you go down towards the south central U.S., plenty of warmth will also be going around through the mid to late week time frame as 90s will be a common theme. That will include zones from Oklahoma all the way as far southeast as Florida. One zone that will be cooler as we go through even Thursday and Friday is going to be around the Great Lakes and then down into the immediate east coast region. That's where we're going to have some near-term and near-average air even before the bigger cool down as a result of that lingering boundary recently pushing through. That means highs around 80 to 82, 83 degrees in many of these zones for the next few days. Not too bad for this time of the year. Just wait for the big cool down to start coming in though. Watch this as we go out of Friday where we're still going to have lots of 90s over especially the south central U.S. And then into Saturday, we start to see that relief coming in from the north. By Sunday, that's when changes really become noticeable and the difference between who's seen at the front and who has not is clear. There's that frontal boundary. 65, 75 degree readings north of the front through the north central U.S. and into the Great Lakes region, 95 to 100 degrees just south of it. That is a big contrast, but the cooler air will continue to prevail and push south over many zones. It's going to be down to 80 with low humidity over southern Missouri by Monday. We're going to have 80 degree readings spreading down into Kentucky and Tennessee. 70s and 60s further north and in the night it will be even cooler with lots of 40s and 50s overspreading the region very unusual for this time of the year with that being said let's now turn attention to the tropics that's actually the topic i've discussed first in a lot of my recent videos i spent a lot of time last week focusing on this storm Aaron. it's finally making its way close to the eastern united states after many people have been hyping up direct impacts at times over the last 10 days the good news is that there's not going to be much of a direct hit there will be a lot of storm surge that impacts places like the Outer Banks of North Carolina, though, despite this storm being well offshore. Rip currents and high surf will be a big issue up and down the East Coast. Keep that in mind if you visit the beach while the storm remains a Cat 2, Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane offshore. As you can see from the National Hurricane Center cone, though, the storm will be heading away from the United States by the time we get towards this weekend and into next week where it will be a weakening storm as well. The bigger topic I've been discussing in the tropics in the last couple videos has actually been the next storm. Here's a look at the latest National Hurricane Center tropical development forecast for that wave, which is currently in the main development region. According to their outlook, a tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic continues to produce a broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development of this system, and a tropical depression could form toward the end of this week or the weekend. This system should move westward to west-northwestward at about 20 miles per hour and approach the vicinity of the northern Leeward Islands on Friday. Beyond Friday and this weekend is where the storm will likely continue to develop while it moves through the southwest Atlantic. Confidence has begun to increase in where the storm will likely track since my last update, and let's discuss that by looking at the lowest pressure plots from individual models that go into this GFS ensemble system. Every little yellow or green spot that you see showing up moving north of the Caribbean islands out of Saturday into Sunday indicates an individual model member that goes into this ensemble system on screen and where it has the lowest pressure occurring at any given time. There's a few plots showing up here indicating that at least a small percentage of this guidance has a tropical storm of some kind, likely being near where Aaron is right now by the time we go towards around Sunday, August 24th. This is definitely by no means 
all of the model members that go into the GFS ensemble. Many of the European model members that go into its ensemble also don't show a storm even existing by this point in time. The ones that do have it existing, though, generally keep it away from places like the Gulf of America and keep it moving on a similar trek to Aaron, wedged between high pressure well out over the Atlantic and whatever's coming in from the eastern part of the United States. Ironically, the same front that's set to bring impacts to the United States in the form of that cool down in the dryer, in particular by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it is set to be moving off the east coast of the U.S. around Monday afternoon in the evening time frame. As it does so, that's what's likely going to help in being a factor that forces this tropical system out to sea if it does indeed take the track that these individual models are showing. That means if it does exist, it has a pretty high chance of staying out over the open waters and being a fish storm. This shows how the evolution of that front that's likely to move off the coast will not only impact the central and eastern United States, it will also affect the tropics. If we do indeed see this tropical storm become a concern, it could very well become less of a concern because it will be offshore, pushed away by the front. There's still a few of these model members that show something getting close to the east coast of North America next week. Right now, though, there's a lot more guidance showing whatever forms to be offshore offshore than not, so that's some good news. With that being said, let's end this video with a recap of the big headlines I just discussed. Of course, the main thing is that we've got sweeping changes coming to the USA into next week. The big front is pretty much a guarantee now, and after that front, things will dry out and cool off in the mainland. The same front could also be useful by keeping the new tropical system offshore. That means lots of good could come from that one change overall. Of course, the USA tropical impact risk remains at low predictability for the next several days, and that's good news because there's not much confidence in anything significant. Make sure to hit the like button, share this video out so info hits people who need it. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. See you next time. One Nation Weather.